What's up, Facebook? How's it going? Hey, it's Dre's Geek Philosophy, <laughs> but this time from uh, Nostalgic Books and Comics in San Gabriel. We are. It's, it's Monday, right? It's not. We're not. It's it's, it's Monday. Yeah, yeah, but but that, that's that's why I made sure that we didn't set up over there. Yeah. Because when we set up over there, that's the be, Wednesday show. It'd be confusing. Yeah, we would just confuse the hell out of everyone. Uh, I was just telling you, if we set the Twitch, I'm like, oh, I would have set up over there mm-hmm. with the camera around there. Hey, yeah, so, yeah. whatever. But <laughs> I, I guess we'll just do the. Uh, uh, let me just do the intro because we we're going to attempt to pull the audio off of this. Yeah. That's what that's what Sam said. He's like, oh, you know, like, oh man, I need to download Audacity and set up the microphones. Like mm-hmm. we did that the, the, the one time we tried to do it yeah. and it didn't work out well. So, yeah, well. so, so executive Sam, well, so, let, let me just do the show intro and then I'll explain everything. Live from San Gabriel today, this is Dre's Geek Philosophy, the Monday, August 7th edition. We're here, as usual, because I, I, I was telling you, it's Monday, it's Monday night, it's 8 p.m., so we, we're doing the show. That's, 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 what, that's what you got to do when you when you do these type of uh, things. You got you to gotta do the show every time, on the same time, every week. There you go. And, and we, we, we give it you a show. So today, we are not in the secret podcast studios. Mm. Today, we are at Pete Molini's comic book store, Nostalgic Books and Comics in San Gabriel, California. Because executive producer Sam Zia <laughs> is, uh, what, he notified us last night, oh yeah, we can't do the show tomorrow <laughs> for the secret podcast studio. He, he is indisposed. Yes. He, he is busy with, with, with his lady. They're, they're, they went off to some sort of conference, or heaven knows, some sort of conference going on, so we have to soldier on without Executive producer Sam Zia. Oh, yep. So you get both of us today from the comic shop. And if you watch our Wednesday show, yeah, it might throw you off a little, a little bit. bit. It, it is Monday. We are here. <laughs> By the other side of the store. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Change, change of the point of view. We do not have the awesome Kirby, yeah. the, the, the Kirby uh, vis- visage behind <laughs> us. Uh, Kirby, the, art, uh, the artist and writer, not Kirby, the Nintendo <laughs> character. Well, 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 well. <laughs> so, uh, a story that we did not touch upon last week, which... <laughs> Uh, where we buried the lead, yeah. we found out Netflix is twenty billion with a B, with a B. twenty billion dollars in debt. Yeah, holy shit, mm-hmm. that is intense. Yeah, I, 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 I was losing my mind. If, if any of you got to catch the Twitch post game show, and oh yeah, we're not tw- broadcasting on Twitch tonight, <laughs> and uh, we're not going to be on iTunes tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, how Netflix, a, a really successful. Yeah. Well, it, Adventure is $20 billion in debt. Who, who are they? Freaking Uber? Yeah. Tesla? I mean, what the hell? And they said that they have 104 million subscribers. So at $10 a head, right? Hey, you're, you're getting a billion dollars a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hand it to you. And you're pissing away more than you're taking in. Uh, I, I guess not necessarily pissing away, but good God. Yeah. That's a lot. That's intense to be twenty billion in debt. I mean, yes, they're producing lots and lots of content. Mm-hmm. They, they're doing all these Marvel shows. They're doing all those. I, I saw they're doing that Will Smith movie. Yeah. There's a Will Smith and a whole bunch of other people who are in in, in masks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whom we cannot tell. I think the other guy is Joel Edgerton. I was like, I'm trying to. Yeah. I, I like who's the actor alongside him in playing the alien in the, the LAPD with aliens. Oh, they're orcs. They're orcs. They're orcs. I'm sorry. It is. <laughs> Oh, you don't know the plot of that movie? Is oh. it fairy tales? Oh, are you ready for this? No, okay. hit me, hit me so, with the plot. No, since so I basically it's Lord of the Rings. Uh-huh. If that never changed, like if, if society continued and there was orcs and fairies and all, yeah. So th- there will be wizards. Well, the the plot of the movie is he's a cop uh-huh. who was teamed up with an orc partner who's like a, a affirmative action hire. <laughs> 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 The affirmative action orc. Yeah. Oh boy! And they get, they get a call that there's something going on, and they find this girl, and she has a magic wand. Okay. And the magic wand could do whatever, and so like everyone's fighting for it. Oh Jesus and Christ! Like, yeah. Huh. So that's the plot of that movie. I mean, well, I, I give Netflix my ten dollars a month, yeah, so I, I, I don't happily well. watch it. I'll watch it. I mean, they, they got my money already, so I will watch. It, 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 huh. It's the Suze Squad team, too. Like, the director, writer, director of Suze Squad. Now I'm less enthusiastic yeah. about it. <laughs> I don't know. You ever seen Fury? That movie's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, the one, the tank movie? Yeah. No. I, I, I meant to watch that movie mm-hmm. for the movie challenge last year. Yeah. But Shia LaBeouf. 
<laughs> no, he's actually pretty good. In it. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. There's no teeth out there. <laughs> he, ain't got, he ain't got no teeth. Yeah. He got that like this. I got no teeth. I shoot the cannons. Boom, boom. <laughs> he's actually pretty good. It's obviously, pretty, Brad Pitt. That's a, that's a pretty good movie. Like, he, he doesn't, like, kill them. He's not Transformers. <laughs> like, it's it's not, not Transformers or, or the opinion of many people. It's not uh, Indiana Jones. Can yeah, there you go. <laughs> which I... One of these days, I should have an. Uh, an I'm gonna probably have an episode where I defend that movie. Well, I enjoy that movie a lot. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. <laughs> Hell, even Steven Spielberg himself says Temple of Doom is the worst one. Uh, that's so weird. That's like my favorite one. <laughs> oh, really? It's your favorite, <laughs> Temple of Doom? Uh, uh, as a kid, that one always bothered me. Really? Well, the monkey brains and pulling out hearts and. But it's the most fun one, dude. Like he's like. I don't know. Was isn't it like a prequel or it wasn't? Like... It is and it is. It I don't know. It, it, it takes place the, before the, the, the timeline. It yeah. takes place before Raiders, right? But then there's stuff that makes it seem like it's a sequel to Raiders. Like that's that's yeah. Like when he shoots the dude. Yeah, but see, he tried to do it again in Temple, but he's like he doesn't have the gun. He's like oh, and so like it's like well oh, wait that 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 <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work that time around. That that's yeah. unusual. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. But yeah, but yeah. So so they're producing all these kinds. Of, all they're producing all this content. Netflix, yeah. all these shows. Arrested Development is coming back yeah. to shooting Arrested Development. I don't know where they're pulling money out of uh, de- <laughs> out of debitors or I don't know. I don't know. How, like it, it, that's what fascinates me about this modern world. But that's the craziest thing too, because you think about it. Because it, realistically, if you look at it, they're making a billion dollars a month. Right. So twenty million in debt is like two years. Correct. So, but that's them that they stop spending. Yeah. <laughs> That means you have to stop paying all the people on their payroll. Yeah. <laughs> you have to stop making the shows. It would take two years to pay it off. Yeah. That's like me. Like I have two years of car debt, and I have to stop eating. <laughs> That's true. But this but, twenty million in debt. I mean, yeah, obviously it's not going to go away. So theoretically. But the, the, do you think it has to do with like, oh, they just dropped a million dollars for Thriller, for a trailer? <laughs> like, oh. Well, that's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> Uh, that's a drop in the bucket. Yeah, uh, Manny and Lofi, uh, yeah, this is a different camera angle because we didn't want to do the Wednesday night camera <laughs> angle. This is this is the Monday night in the comic shop camera angle. Yeah. We have different camera angles. <laughs> like the one time we did uh, we we did uh, a game streaming premiere, we had a completely different angle. There was a third camera angle. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a little studio. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we're all, I mean, honestly, b- before Executive Producer Sam Zia generously offered this was, yeah, his studio. This was going to be yeah, the, 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 the Nostalgic Books and Comics podcast studio. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. And now in a... Well, it's, it's not a brand new set. We actually used this for episode two of the, yeah. of the show. When we set up a, didn't we set up a table? A table, yeah. We set up a table and we're sitting down with the we, microphones. We and in, oh yeah, we had no idea. We had no idea. Oh, the guy that read the, 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 the Audacity recording that was awful. Since I don't know how to program microphones. But yeah, so... I mean... Netflix just putting themselves in crazy debt and mm-hmm. I, I mean obviously I think they can work I think they're just trying to get even more subscribers but see, okay okay do you think it hurts when they give you like that whole month free and like you think people are like oh Defenders is starting let me get my free month on Netflix and no cause, cause that's that's usually the, the that's the that's the argument every time for all these paid services cause I hear that all the time like one of my favorite services is the WWE Network yeah and people frequently say, oh, I, I always, uh, they'll sign up for the free month. And you have to have a different credit card every time or whatever. You have to create a new account every time you do a free one. But clearly, I mean, if they have 100 million subscribers, yeah. a few 100,000 people or so up and just sign up for a free month, I don't think that affects their bottom line as much. But, I mean, do you, but do you feel like it kind of, it gets the point where it's just stagnant? Like, it's not going to get, they we're not going to get more than 100 million well, uh I don't know, because I, I, I feel like, you know, if we, we're talking about like 10 years ago, they probably only made yeah. 20, 30 million. I mean, it continually grows. As, yeah. I feel like as more as broadband expands, as, as internet becomes more accessible, I, I think there are a, there's a lot of untapped potential out there for yeah. people to sign up for Netflix. And I feel like there's still people who are on the fence for a lot oh, of yeah. streamers. There's a lot, I feel like there's a lot of older people who are on the fence. And I feel like there's a lot of younger people. Because Netflix is always that, that, that answer when people say, oh, I'm going to cut the cord. Yeah. You know, when people want to cut the cord from, mm-hmm. from cable or satellite, they're, they're responding, oh, I'll just get Netflix, I'll just get HBO Go, yeah. I'll just get all these on-demand services, mm-hmm. and that's way cheaper than signing up. So that whole $10 a month, I, I think they're trying to make it so they, they're trying to cut down their bottom line where they maybe don't have to license as many movies as much. Yeah. If they have all their own content, yeah. 
they produce themselves that they don't have to pay money on top like obviously they have to pay to create it but once they've created the series they it's there forever yeah it's, it's not, it's like, oh, we don't have to pay a renewal fee yeah. every time we want to renew the office or we want to renew a certain movie or, or, if, or if, a, if a company wants to pull back. Yeah. I mean, Disney, I mean, at some point, all the Disney movies are exclusively on Netflix. Yeah. And that, I feel, is gonna, that's going to be something that's going to jump subscriber numbers. Yeah. Well, because they're like, someone made Daredevil one time, they were like, like, oh, it's dumb that you can't get Daredevil season one on DVD or Blu-ray. And I'm like, why would they do that? Like it makes no sense for them to do it because it's like they want you to watch it on Netflix. They want you to watch it on Netflix. Yeah. I mean, well, they do put something like yeah. House of Cards is on, yeah, on, yeah. on DVD. I think uh, Orange is the Black. Orange is the yeah. Black is also yeah. on, on DVD. I think Daredevil is barely coming out. Like it, They're barely releasing that on DVD. I, I think the only motivation behind that would be to get people, oh, watch this season, and oh, now you bought the season, go subscribe to Netflix yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it probably comes with, like, oh, here's a, here's a free month. Yeah. Sign up. Give us your credit card information and forget to come to subscribe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, that, that's the that's the key to a lot of these subscription. Oh yeah, and once you're in, the kind of they once you're in and you kind of don't notice and you forget that you're subscribed to this stuff. Yeah. They, they want they want to, they, they, they they kind of lock you down. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're you're technically trapped a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, that's me with a lot of services personally. <laughs> I am one of those consumers. I, if I if I am honest, I, I subscribe to the the CISO the the, the comedy uh, the comedy oh, streaming yeah. app. Yeah. I, I signed up for it and I I just haven't. I subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. They take five bucks, four or five dollars from me every month, and I'm like, okay, I occasionally just jump in and watch some stand up on, on my phone. <laughs> every so often, I probably don't get my five month, five dollars, but they're counting on people like me yeah. who are like, oh, too lazy to go in and unsubscribe and go yeah. through the whole, oh, it's such a process. Oh, I like using well, it. Oh, yeah, they, they definitely make it harder to unsubscribe that stuff. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they, 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 it is an issue. It's it, not easy to unsubscribe. It, it, it is not. So, uh, another, another thing with Netflix that would be more, more related to nerds. Is that apparently today they purchased the Millar World, Millar World yeah. um, uh, comic book writer Mark Millar, who's uh, who has been he's kind of quit just quit mainstream comics, yeah. created his own world, the uh, the Kingsman Secret Service. Yeah, that that is. is one of his uh, kick is in kick out kick, kick ass. ass. That's a kick so ass. all of that stuff. Apparently Netflix bought the whole thing. They bought the whole thing. We bought were, the studio. They bought the entire studio, lock, stock, and and barrel, which is kind of insane. Yeah, uh, which I don't know how that's gonna work because. I know that the way he was getting people, because that's the thing about Malar. Some people like him, some people don't. He's, he's a very polarizing figure with yeah. his books. Um, but the way he was getting these books put out was he was getting big name creators. I mean, I mean, the kick ass was John Romita Jr. John Romita Jr. had never done an independent comic prior to that. He was a Marvel guy. Like, yeah. I'm sure he has never had to draw that much uh, flesh and blood and, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and pornography in his life. <laughs> So that's how he was getting these books out. Was he was he was attracting these big name artists? Because uh, is, is that that Jupiter? Is that oh, Frank Wiley. Frank Wiley. Well, Frank Wiley yeah. Another another big comic book name. Uh, Secret world. Service is uh, what's his face? Um, crap, uh, the Watchmen artist. Um, Dave Gibbons. Dave Gibbons. Really? The, se- the, the, the Secret Service. Yeah. Huh. The comic book is basically the the, 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 the Kingsman Secret Service. The, the comic book that's basically. That was Dave Gibbons? Dave Gibbons. Holy shit. Dave Gibbons uh, 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 drew the thing. I think he co-wrote it, too. Um, you know, like, uh, what's his name? Francis Yule? Like he, he's done a couple more Our World books. Interesting. Um, yeah. So he gets a lot of big people. But the way he gets them is by he, tell, he tells them. It's creator owned. They get a yeah, we don't, we don't own this. And Malar makes mo- Malar makes comics to make movies. Yeah, that's that's what he, he that's what he's done. Yeah. Was it, was, was Wanted another Malar? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's Wanted, kick yeah. ass. So, so now Netflix has bought the whole studio. They yeah. didn't. They didn't just buy the rights mm-hmm. to the to the comic books. They, bought the they literally bought the studio. Millar has mm-hmm. been promoting this all day. So yeah, uh, like like Manny and Levi said to me, there's a, a Kickass series. Yeah, that's that's what people are hoping for, like a Kickass TV show, like a Netflix series. You know, that'd be kind of cool uh, if, if they could do the comic book a little bit more accurately. Cause yeah. I, I, it's funny because it was a, f- a few days ago on one of my Facebook memories. I, I put that I'd seen Kickass, but it was just like, oh, they kind of like. Yeah, <laughs> they, they they softened it up. Yeah, <laughs> they made it a lot less, uh, a lot less violent. Well, <laughs> it was pretty violent. <laughs> they, they toned it. Oh, well, they toned down a lot of the themes. Yeah. A lot of the, the, the stuff that that made really made it groundbreaking in the world of comics at that point in time. That made a really it could touch a lot of subjects that you wouldn't normally have yeah. happen in a comic book. Which I guess nowadays maybe is not so taboo yeah. anymore. Nowadays, uh, everything's over the top. I remember the the main thing that bugged me about that Kick Ass movie was. In the comic, when he gets hit by that car, 
and he's all busted up. Like, it's a very dramatic scene. Mm-hmm. In the movie, it was kind of like, oh, I'm better now. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, in the movie, it was like getting bit by a spider. Yeah. <laughs> like, he got bit by a spider, and then, oh, okay. Well, they put all the mental things in me, and now I'm okay. Where in the comic, it was just like, he was in traction. Yeah. He was <laughs> fucked up. His dad went broke <laughs> trying to fucking pay for all the medical bills. Yeah, like I said, it was yeah. very dramatic in the comic book. And the movie was like, eh, it was a thing that happened. Yeah, because even, I think, that was the thing. When he sees the, the, the he sees the uh, x-ray, and he's like, oh, I'm like Wolverine or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so, but Molar has been comparing it to, uh, to okay. Warner's uh, buying, um, buying DC and Disney buying, uh, Marvel. Mm-hmm. So I mean, so I guess it means that like, Netflix own, they're going to be putting out comic books. Now. They're going to be putting uh, Netflix is going to own those Millar World comic books. Which wait, but doesn't it kind of run counter to Mark Millar saying, "Oh, well, you, this is creator owned stuff, yeah. so now it's not creator owned now"? Or technically, maybe it's not. I mean, everything's going to be going through through Netflix. Because one of the things that he he did for Millar World, which was really interesting, it was really confusing at the same time, was that Millar World would come out through Icon, which was Marvel. Mm-hmm. Or it would come out through Image, or it would come out, but it was always Millar World and whatever other company. Oh, he kind of like the farm it out, like yeah. you know, like it wasn't, it wasn't just one exclusive, like whatever, whoever would agree to publish it. Yeah, interesting. So now, I mean, now that Netflix owns it, are they gonna like have their own, you know, their own label, or mm-hmm. are they gonna Netflix Comics? Yeah, <laughs> which would be kind of cool because you get Stranger Things comics, like that'd be kind of <gasps> cool. <laughs> I had not considered that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing that could happen. We could have a Stranger Things comic book. Yeah. Oh, but we can't let Mark Millarney, right? No, well, yeah. <laughs> the terrible things that happened. Poor Eleven. Yeah. My God. <laughs> That's true. Oh, that true. no, no. We, I mean, we, I want a Stranger Things comic yeah. book. I want, I want more of that ha- Harkin, uh, Hawkins. Yeah. Hawkins? God, I need to rewatch that. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think we all need to rewatch that before October so we can get a refresher <laughs> on what's going on. I wonder if that means it. Because he was, remember he was, uh, they made him like the, the Kevin Feige of Fox. I wonder if he still has that position now. Like, is he still gonna? Is I that, don't know. Is that a conflict now? Like, I, I would, I would imagine it's a conflict because yeah. uh, Netflix, you know, is in bed with Marvel and Disney. Clearly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> clearly in bed with them. But I, I, I don't know. That's a, and, not, a, and if you're saying like now, like Netflix is to Millar World as you know Disney is to Marvel and Warner Brothers. DC, yeah. that's definitely going to be a conflict yeah. of interest. Oh, unless he's divesting himself. He just, he's like, oh, it's no longer going to be our world, it's going to be Netflix world or Netflix comics now. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know if he's separating himself, giving himself a nice big paycheck yeah. out of that debt. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Just piling onto that debt, which our, our show contributor, Kit Fan, put like, uh, apparently 16 million of that debt is in the streaming obligations. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's all I was leaning forward trying to read the long 16 message. Sixteen million. Sixteen billion. Oh, Sorry. fifteen billion. Oh. Sixteen billion. Yeah. Oh, Sixteen wow. billion is, is streaming obligation. So I guess paying people that's for the content. Yeah. So. Wow. Crazy pass. Just saying, yeah. insane. That, that's that's pretty. That's some there's intense still, numbers. There's still four billion in debt <laughs> on top of that. Oh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that's like all the production. Yeah. You know? Because uh, you know, they have they have offices here in Santa Monica. They're producing all this stuff. So it's like that's that's where. See, I always assume that they never really produced things. They, they just bought stuff. Like they were like, you know, like oh, someone made a movie and like oh, Netflix bought it and now it's Netflix. Oh, know? now 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 they're they're self producing yeah. that because like I mentioned earlier, now they know they don't have to pay licensing fees. Yeah. They can just own this in perpetuity because obviously they're going to be able. Netflix sees themselves being around from now till the end of time. Oh yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, because they they do. Uh, was it uh, Black Mirror? Right, Black Mirror is their show. Yeah. And then uh, have you seen the preview of that? Well, I think it's out already. That new Jason Bateman show. There's a new Jason Bateman show. Yeah, it's like they're compared. They, it had the best thing. It, it was. It, and they said it's Breaking Bad meets uh, Arrested Development. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll have to check it out. Man, a Kia fam, show contributor. They have a market value of seventy-five billion, so they're not poor. Well, market value. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Like the way this whole business works, like you can be in crazy debt, but you can still, yeah, exactly. of course, you can still be in high valuation. Yeah. So. On to other nerd things, <laughs> since I have my format here. Last night, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Episode 3. Oh, man. Pickle, pickle Rick! Pickle Rick. We finally get to find out why the fuck did Rick turn himself into a pickle? Because in all, all the trailers, you know, we would see like, I'm a pickle. Hey, Morty, I'm Pickle Rick. And it's like, why in the hell would... Rick turn himself into a pickle? And, uh, yeah. uh, for anyone who hasn't watched the episode yet... I would advise maybe muting us for the next <laughs> moment. Um, um, 
Yeah, Rick. Oh, so this is your spoiler warning. There's going to be another one when we talk Game of Thrones in a little bit. And so, Rick turns himself into a pickle to get out of going to a, a, a family counselor. Family counselor. What? I mean, that's just like, <laughs> that just shows you the diabolical evil of Rick. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, Rick's only looking out for himself. He only gives a fuck about himself. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. I love the whole thing, too, where, like, Morty figures it out. So he has a syringe. Yeah, they, they, they see the Rube Goldberg yeah. thing where, like, there's a timer. And they go, 10 minutes or more. Oh, right when they leave. Yeah. And this, uh, the, the timer sets off the scissors and drops a syringe that'll cure Rick of being a pickle. <laughs> and the whole thing, too, like, he's just, like, he's trying to justify it. He's like, oh, no one would do this because no one can. The only reason you would do it is because you can. Because you can. You know, I get, I get to figure out how to, how to get out of it. And, of course, so they, 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 they figure it out. Snatch away a syringe of anti-pickle. <laughs> and so then half the episode is them going to family therapy, and then they have his... Is a pickle Rick it's going like, on an adventure? Basically, like Die Hard, right? It was pretty much like Die Hard. I mean, he's like killing roaches and killing rats and repurposing their bodies. And the, the, truly, Rick proves that he is the smartest man in the universe. I love to be in a pickle, literally. Oh God, what a, what a terrible pun! I'm so sorry for that awful pun. But he's literally a pickle in a pickle, and he's yeah. You love how? I love how he uh, that, that scene when. We first see him attack the roach, and he's using his tongue to like control the roach's brain. <laughs> That's just like that was insane. Like ah, rips the rips the freaking the, the carapace off the ro roach's brain. He's controlling the roach, <laughs> figuring out. No, we're not open. <laughs> Apparently, we have a say that. That's the problem with uh, doing that. Doing a, an episode of the show from a, from a retail establishment. There's people knocking on the door trying yeah. to barge in and. I don't know if they want to buy comics. They want to look at comics. So. They just want it, to look at it's comics. It's way past closing, too. So I'm like, like we're we're, we're pay, uh, the store is officially closed. We we didn't close down the store no, for the show. No. The show was already in closing hours. Yeah. Think, think about this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's children trying to push their way in the store. We see the uh, and then the trailer for next week. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like Guardians of the Galaxy. Like they're teaming up. With like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, next week. Like, hey, just see this. Hey. You know, I, I know we bitch and whine about how long it's, it, it took for us to get this, uh, these new episodes, but each one's been a fucking home yeah, run. Yeah. I mean, the Mad Max episode last week, Pickle Rick this week, <laughs> with Danny Trejo. Yeah, if you haven't watched yeah. it, Danny Trejo does a voice. Yeah. Jaguar. <laughs> Jaguar. And then Susan Sarandon was... Uh, was she the, 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 the uh, family counselor yeah. shit slash shit eating counselor? <laughs> <laughs> the, apparently, <laughs> we get to find out Mr. Goldenfold eats shit. <laughs> <laughs> that great picture of the woman eating the hot dog, Courage. I saw that on the Adult Swim Facebook page. I was like, what? Why is there a motivational picture of a woman eating a hot dog and it says Courage? You find, oh no, it's, it's for the shit eating people. Yeah. I love when Morty picks up the book. He's like, oh god, there's pictures of people eating shit in here. And then she even says to her, right? She goes, like, oh, tell your friends if you have friends that eat shit, like, you know, like, recommend them to me. Like, recommend them to me. That Susan Sarandon was, was the, the, the shit therapist, the shit eating therapist. What the fuck? Just, and of course, the, of course, we have, uh, like, like we talked about last week, Rick and Morty, it, it, the perfect fusion of like over the top ridiculous nonsense, but intertwined with really emotional relations. Yeah. You hear them, they, they, they go through all the, men, the, the issues of you know Rick and Morty and Beth and Summer, the issues that they're having with the divorce that's going on. Yeah. And so there's this real emotional stuff. And he had Pickle Rick, again, going to iron rats, <laughs> killing this, on a rat killing yeah. spree. That was actually it. Was, it was very vis. I had to, like rewind it and watch it again because I was like horrified, but also fascinated <laughs> with our like the, the the amazing super science of Rick to create all these things. <laughs> yeah, because when he makes that rat suit, you see like. He literally has a piece of the rat's brain in the back of his head plugged in. That's how he's controlling the arms. That's like, controlling everything. Like, it's all freaking insane. Just the the minds of freaking Justin Roiland and fucking Dan Harmon to come up with, and then all their fucking all the awesome like artists and designers they have to come up with all this shit. Yeah. Oh my god. That was insane. That's in. It is insane. Yeah, Rick and Morty. Yeah, I, I definitely I recommend one. Uh, check it out from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, if you have uh, if you have any of the regular services, you can just go ahead and stream it on the Adult Swim app. Um, they're showing all the episodes on, on Adult Swim. I, I really recommend watching them. Uh, 
uh, Rick and Morty. If you haven't, if you haven't checked it out, it's really insane. It's really hilarious, and it's also very depressing at the same time. It, it's really intense. So, uh, something else that happened last night in the world of television: Game of Thrones. Yeah. Right now, it, 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 if you're on Facebook, uh, Game of Thrones. When Game of Thrones freaking hits, it, you, you, you know, it, it took it took over Facebook last night. I, I couldn't. Uh, I, I couldn't really log on to Facebook last night. I, I, I worked through the episode of Game of Thrones, so I had to drive home. And as I was driving home, I, 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 someone was messaging me. He's like, OMG, Game of Thrones. I was like, stop! No, 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 please! <laughs> Throwing the phone out the freaking door. Oh, good God. And I, I, I got myself home, I can lock myself in the room, turned off the phone, turned on Game of Thrones, and holy shit, I know you're not a Game of Thrones guy, but last night was probably, like, if you if you are ever going to watch an episode of Game of Thrones, this... The second half would be amazing. First half, you'd be like, "What the fuck is happening?" Because <laughs> yeah. for, for for those who've been watching the show for a long time, the first half was there was a lot of like there's a lot of big things happening. They reunited a lot of characters that haven't seen each other in, in several seasons. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of intense stuff going on. Little 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 jabs. Uh, one there's one girl. There's one young young girl. Like she over the course of the the, the seven seasons, she's went from like this you know, scared little well not really scared. She was a little girl who couldn't defend herself. So now she's a fucking ninja. <laughs> She fights as the, the giant six foot, the, the lady who was Captain Phasma. Yeah. Like, they have an awesome fight, and it's so odd. Like, they're, they're sparring. She's like, oh, I want to fight against you, and it's just an amazing fight. You're like, spoiler alert! And by the way, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> like, we, we dropped down to two viewers, because probably <laughs> everyone's like, oh, spoilers, no, 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 Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Anyone who hasn't watched it yet, if you don't have HBO, yeah. or if you're way on, the, on, on HBO, go. But yeah, they have this amazing, like, she has this little tiny sword, but she's like, what a freaking ninja. She's like darting back and forth. He's a six foot tall woman. With the giant swords, like boom, 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 just owning her. This is amazing. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the second half of the episode, like I, like I was telling you in the pre-show, mm -hmm. there's been these, these dragons throughout the show. They never really haven't, they haven't really done much in the show. But t last night, it's the first time they kind of unleashed one of the dragons in an actual battle. Nice. And it was, woo, <laughs> intense. Right. The intense is the best word. Oh, good guy. It, it's very visceral. Like, the, some of the best stunt work I've ever seen. All these guys on fire. It was just—it was amazing. Uh, like major stuff happening through all these with all these major characters. Mm -hmm. All have, like this is one of the, uh, a, a theme I kept seeing last night on the internet. This is the first time we actually had like fan favorite characters from both sides because there's characters on the on the evil side and you know, that everybody really likes. And all of a sudden you see them clashing, oh. and you're like, please don't die. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you're like, who do I like better? <laughs> who do I like more? Crap, 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 crap. <laughs> and it's just amazing. And yeah. like that, the, the episode ends in a. Crazy cliffhanger. It just, I don't ever recall it ever leaving out on such a freaking insane cliffhanger where just like, shit happens. Like, I'm gonna try to be a spoiler ish, or oh, without any spoiler, but like, shit happens. Like, if you were to watch it, you would have been like, what the fuck is this? Like, I yelled at fuck you at the TV several times. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah. Oh, it's a, I don't know. It was, a, it was a freaking. It was intense. Like as I was watching, like that's how like I feel like I wasn't alone. Like I was so emotionally invested during mm. the last twenty minutes of this deal. I'm like, who are they gonna kill? Because <laughs> like it's funny because like they, they built up this show where like they could kill anyone yeah. at any time. They killed Sean Bean's character in the first season. Yeah. Like the, that was like the like, that guy was like, oh he's the main character. They yeah. can't kill him. Episode nine, <laughs> bloop, no head. What the fuck? Like the yeah. freaking. That, that, that's why a lot of people really love the show. Because it, it was such a quote, kind of a game changer in that, like, oh, no one's safe. Yeah. <laughs> like, you've never read the books. You're in for a ride. <laughs> and now, we've reached the point now where they're beyond the books. Right? We're the beyond yeah, the books. Yeah. So everyone's losing their goddamn minds for all these episodes. That's why the internet's exploding. Yeah. Like, every time a new episode hits right now. And then I think we only have like three episodes left. I mean, like, only like three or four episodes left. And we're just like, all because everything's kind of compressed, it has been intense. Mm. Every episode, important things have happened. There's been, uh, there's been a major battle in every episode. Which is insane. Yeah. And before, like in, in previous seasons, there maybe be like one or two major battles. Like it would always usually be episode nine of every season. There'd be a big ass fucking fight or a big thing would happen. Yeah. And this season, every episode shit has gone down. <laughs> like it's like what the fuck? There's a lot of what the fuck. So this season is amazing. Everyone is um freaking. Anyone who's watching, I'm sure is enjoying the show. And if you're not a Game of Thrones person, it, it's really it. It's pretty fun. No. I mean, you kind of get invested, but it's really hard to follow because there's hundreds of characters. <laughs> Man. Hundreds of characters. You know what doesn't have a lot of characters? Remember the, the old movie Dodgeball? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dodgeball. For, for those of you who follow the show on Facebook, <laughs> Dodgeball, I mean, that, that's one of my favorite comedies. Dodgeball, a, a true underdog story. 
one of the funny things about the sh about that movie, they had they, they made fun of ESPN and how ESPN has lost channels. Yeah. ESPN the Ocho. The Ocho. <laughs> They're home for 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 lightly viewed sports. Yeah, anything that could be considered a sport, right? Anything could be considered a sport. So apparently later this month, yeah, I believe it's August fifteenth. If, if I, I should have written it down, I, I did look it up in the yeah. pre-show. On uh, at some point this month, you can check our Facebook page. It'll have more details. ESPN is taking one of their channels, ESPNU, where they show a lot of college stuff. There's going to be a day where they're going to turn into the Ocho. The Ocho. <laughs> they're turning one of their channels into ESPN, the Ocho. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, is it 8? Oh, no. It's 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh, no. Thank you so much. Oh, er, it's August 8th. Oh, Duh. Oh, oh. August 8th. Duh. I'm so dumb. <laughs> Tomorrow is the Ocho. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh. Tomorrow's the Ocho. I'm glad I brought it up today. Thank you. Show contributors, Irv and Kit Bam. You guys are the real MVPs right now. Tomorrow is the Ocho. And so they're going to show lightly viewed sports. <laughs> or, or, no, it's fine. One of the things is uh, it, it, it's, uh, the, the Street Fighter Championships that oh, happened a couple yeah, months yeah. ago. That's one of the things. They're showing lumberjacking. <laughs> I think that there's, like, I think, weirdly though, it's a lot of stuff they've actually have shown before, yeah. except for like one sport. There's one thing that they haven't shown before. And but the thing I really wanted, I think a lot of people really wanted, is they wanted freaking Gary Cole yeah. <laughs> and Jason Bateman to show up and be freaking yeah. Pepper and freaking. <laughs> yeah. I forgot the other commentator's name. Tomorrow's the fucking Ocho. Fuck my life. I'm gonna be working all day. <laughs> what if it had to do with the fact that you know, was it uh, they're doing that dodgeball thing for a maze? Yeah, they, yeah. I, I feel like it's probably tied into that. I'm sure they'll probably bring that up throughout the, throughout the day. I think it's all tied into each other. Cause, mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're the new thing where like Vince Vaughn and then they're, they're, they're re, you know, replaying play. these. You can play dodgeball with them if you yeah. donate money to all these charities. So I feel like it is tied to yeah. that because it, it can't just be random happens. Yeah. Like ESPN decides, hey, the Ocho. The Ocho. <laughs> but I, I honestly thought that I thought that was really cool. That, that, that that's something that made me very like, the, the 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 nerd in me was very happy because that is one of those movies I can like if it comes on TV. I'm just gonna watch it. <laughs> dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Yeah, dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> Remember the five D's of dodgeball: dodge, dip, duck, dive, dodge. and dodge. dodge. <laughs> and then for me, one one of the most underrated lines in the movie for me is always, "Nobody makes me bleed my own blood." <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those lines that just kills me every time. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I will randomly drop it in conversation whenever I can, <laughs> just because it, it amuses me so. And that was like a rare Ben Stiller's the bad guy and Vince Vaughn is the good guy. Like, yeah, usually it's like the other way around. Yeah, always the other way around. Yeah, Vince Vaughn knows how to play a bad guy really well. Yeah. Or like, not really a bad guy, but a douchebag. Yeah, douche <laughs> and Ben Stiller's a white, white goodman. The white goodman. <laughs> Women better watch out when white man goodman wears his shiny shoes. <laughs> It was so ridiculous. Yeah. Though. Arr, Steve the Pirate. You know? <laughs> fucking wash. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Nick. <laughs> Steve the Pirate. Steve the fucking Pirate. There's so many dumb things throughout the whole movie. <laughs> Laser. Taser. Maser. <laughs> it, 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 this movie just cracks me the fuck up. I know. They, were, they were Cobra, right? They were like Team Cobra? Yeah, the, the, the Purple Cobra. Purple Cobra, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> See now you're gonna go home and rewatch yeah, it. I got it. That is one of the few DVDs I still have oh. with me at my house. There you go. That was one of those I'm like, I'm keeping this one with me. <laughs> the majority of my DVDs are stored in my mom's garage, but that's one of those I have with me. Yeah, I gotta do it. It's funny because the other day I, I was actually watching Zoolander. The other day. Oh, yeah, it happened to be on my roommate had it on. I walked by, I'm like, oh, I'm sitting down. So I, uh, and for me, I, I I sit and I watch until I see Bowie. Oh, yeah. Because David Bowie's cameo is, is like, that's the highlight of the movie for me. <laughs> the movie is pretty funny and hilarious, but David Bowie shows up, I'm like, I'll judge this here. <laughs> and then, disqualified! <laughs> just kill that. Like, Bowie's cameo, just, he plays it so yeah. freaking serious, but it's hilarious. <laughs> like, Bowie! Yeah. He's a fucking a legit, like, a space traveling rock star shows up in this ridiculous, <laughs> silly Ben Stiller movie. <laughs> you ever see the second one? No, no, I, 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 I kind of refuse to watch that one. You, you know it's what? It's too much of a good thing, my friend. It's not good, but <laughs> uh, Lydia Morales says hi, Peter. Oh, that's Joanna's sister. Hi, hello, Joanna's sister, Lydia. Uh, but um, Sting is in it. Oh, and and he, it says he played the deep Bowie uh, he played, and role. It, it's pretty hilarious. Like the Sting stuff is pretty hilarious. Oh, really? <laughs> like, so, other than that, though, it's it, not. if I catch it on the movie yeah. network for you know, for, and then I don't have to commit to it, 
put in a theater, then maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it a whirl. Yeah. It, it has its moments. It has its moments. Because you know what else I realized about the movie? That was Will Ferrell pre-Will Ferrell being a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Him being Mugatu was freaking... Mugatu? Is he invented the piano... Uh... The piano actor. <laughs> the next time. Then relax. <laughs> Frankie goes Hollywood. Relax. And then there's Duchovny. <laughs> David Duchovny was a hat, famous hat model. <laughs> and then, uh, and you know what's funny? Uh, uh, a, a fact that I learned from a podcast, from another podcast I listened to the, the, the other day, that it, that is in Billy Zane's top four of his IMDb best known for. <laughs> Not the Phantom. <laughs> Not the Phantom. Which I watched the other day. Which you just watched the other day. No, it goes go like Titanic, Back to the Future. Oh, that's right. He's in Back to the Future. And like Zoolander. I'm like, he's known for two cameos? The guy's been in a bunch of movies, I believe. He's yeah. the Phantom. He was the Phantom. Was, that, not his best known for, but apparently yeah. I guess it didn't do that well. Yeah. I remember when the Phantom was a thing. Yeah. That was, so that was a whole era. Like I was, I was, I was watching that The movie. cheesy bad comic movies? Well, yeah, they were making like these like Hulk movies. Like there's a Phantom and the Shadow and... The Rocketeer, and it was just like that's right. That that was the comic book craze of the yeah. of the, the late nineties. I wonder if it was, I, I feel like it had to do because it was easier to get the rights to that stuff. I bet. Yeah. Well, well, Marvel famously sold off all the rights, and no yeah. one did anything with them. <clears throat> that's true. They sold off the X Men rights. They sold off the Spider Man rights. Which well, maybe is now yeah. why we have this big rigmarole of trying yeah. to get all these movies back on the same page. I wonder, it, it probably had to do, maybe it had to do with the fact that like, oh, they're like, oh people aren't going to have high expectations of these and we can do whatever we want. That's true. Yeah. That's true. You, you don't have the, the massive fan following of, yeah. of all these you know, big characters. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, Dick Tracy, bro. They made the Dick Tracy movie. Dick Tracy. You know what? That movie was actually really good. Yeah, I like that movie a lot. That's uh, an awesome cast, dude. It was. If you go back and watch because I watched that during my movie challenge mm-hmm. last year. Dick Tracy was. Oh, you had never seen it before that? I'd only seen, like, for whatever reason, my parents had never let me watch it. Because mm. as a kid, I remember the insane marketing campaign. Oh, it was everywhere. McDonald's. Oh, my God. Yeah. They promoted the shit out yeah. of me. This was pre-internet, man. That movie was everywhere. I remember being fascinated by them. I remember finding Dick Tracy comic books mm-hmm. and reading those. I remember renting the Dick Tracy NES game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember renting that. But my parents, for whatever reason, I go, they took me to see Cobra. <laughs> Cobra. <laughs> uh, violence. No. See, the, the, the typical religious hustle. Violence is okay, but sex is it's bad. Not, that's I, I feel. I think it was because of Madonna, yeah. which I was not allowed to watch that movie. <laughs> she was. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Breathless Mahoney. Oh no 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 no! Not the Test Your Heart. She's a real MVP. Oh that yeah. Movie. yeah. Actually, both Breathless Mahoney and Trust You, they were the real MVPs. Mm. Dick Tracy didn't do shit. No. <laughs> the ladies did all the work in that movie. I believe that, that that is what I put in the tweet when I watched that movie for the movie oh, challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put that in the tweet that the ladies were the real MVPs yeah. of that movie. Dick Tracy just showed up. Yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> he just talked to he just talked to a it's watch so and freaking drove around and punched people in the face. <laughs> where the ladies did all the work for him. Yeah, I think, but then that started a whole era of like but after that movie because that movie was was largely successful, yeah, right? Yeah. So that, that started yeah. a lot. But of you notice like a lot of those movies, those, the comic book movies, they all look like that. Like you like the Joe Schumacher Batman movies. There's a lot of like, neon colors and very bright because I guess yeah. they're trying to make them bright. Because comic books yeah. traditionally have always been very colorful, yeah. very bright, mm-hmm. bright lights, bright colors. Like yeah. everything jumps out because I guess it's supposed to jump out of the screen yeah. to, to appear larger in life or not real. Yeah, <laughs> because like yeah, they, they, I think it's that's the movie that started that craze. Because even like that old Flash TV show in the '90s, it was very colorful. Like, it was super colorful, and, like, you know. I feel like people who, like, go. But he had a cool gadget and a great silhouette. <laughs> and then <laughs> Scott brings that up, you know, great gadget, and then the Kiet fam, and then you have Darkman. <laughs> you, you know, Liam Neeson before he was Liam Neeson. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, you know how that came about? How did Darkman come about? Enlighten Sa- me. Sam Raimi mm-hmm. wanted to make the shadow, and they wouldn't let him do it. So he was like, I'm just going to make my, my own Pope hero. And that's he created Dark Man. He created Dark Man. So that wasn't even a comic book. No. But I think a comic book came out after yeah. or in conjunction like yeah. they used to do back in the day. <laughs> and yeah, so he just he, you know he created this he created his own pulp hero. And then the craziest thing was he wanted Bruce Campbell to be Dark Man. Mm-hmm. And Universal put out that movie and they're like, nah, he's not famous enough. <laughs> like, you know, like, we're they, not gonna They go with with Liam Neeson who was He was like eh. <laughs> Yeah. I mean I I think he's way more famous now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After 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 took him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so as yeah, so they get Liam Neeson, but there's a cool thing at the end of the movie mm-hmm. when he runs off into the crowd, 
he pulls out a mask and he, he becomes Bruce Campbell. Ha! So he, <laughs> Sam Raimi got him in. He threw him in there eventually. Yeah, they, hey man, that's a, that, 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 one of the benefits of being Sam Raimi's yeah. best friend. You can just, yeah, just throw yeah. him in there. The smuggle him in a movie whenever whenever you, you find it possible. Well, speaking of movies, mm-hmm. that like uh, like sometimes they catch on, something they don't. Like today, I I had this weird urge and I rewatched Tron Legacy. Oh, that's a good movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I think. A lot of people didn't like it, but. You know, that is the only movie I ever paid to see in 3D. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Just because I was like, this is going to look cool. Like, right. like, <laughs> see, I watched that movie in IMAX. Oh. And I, and then, as, as you always hear me say, I had to go to a real IMAX theater. Yeah. Not all these live IMAX theaters. Because <laughs> one, one, one of my friends, he's always been really bougie about it. Yeah. One of my longtime friends from back, back, back when I worked at Nintendo, take a drink. He, he was the one who enlightened me. He's like, no, you have to go online. You have to go to Limax.com. <laughs> they provided a map. I don't know if that's still around. But yeah. I, I found out. I found this out like in 08 or 07 or 08. When my friends told me, no, there's, there's certain screens that are true IMAX and a lot of these that are BS IMAX. We're like, oh, they have a slightly larger screen. Maybe they have a good sound system, but it's not a true IMAX screen like as if you went to the California Science Center or if you went to the Irvine Spectrum. That's a true IMAX screen. I watched Dark Knight down there. <laughs> or... Universal City Walk. Yeah. They were one of the first IMAX theaters. They have a true yeah. IMAX screen where you're there, you're like, fuck everything. Yeah. <laughs> that. And, the, and so I remember when Tron Legacy came out, because remember, remember you had signed the, uh, oh, you, you had got the Tron we, Night. We, we saw the first 10 minutes. We saw the first 10 minutes of the movie, yeah. and then they gave us a little wristband yeah. and whatever other tchotchkes they're trying to say, they're trying to motivate and <laughs> Go gauge, watch Tron. gauge interest. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Cool, check it out. I remember, I went out of my way, and I, I went to... That, that, I went to the theater in Universal. I paid the twenty something dollars, I'm sure, or eighteen. Well, I think like eighteen to twenty bucks yeah. to watch it. And watching it on that big IMAX screen, that was pretty fucking cool. With yeah. the IMAX sound system, because you know, Daft Punk freaking yeah. did the entire soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And it was just a, a it's such a visual and audio oh, yeah. experience. It's such a good. I, I feel it was kind of a. I, I really feel like it was underappreciated because oh, yeah. I, it was it was it was truly. A, it tried to do what the original movie did 30 years prior. Yeah. Like that, that movie 30 years ago, well, 30 years from then, you know, it's yeah. 35 now. Good God. Uh, that was very visually stunning back yeah. then. It, that was a state of the art. If you look, if you watch it now, you're like, oh, wow, this looks pretty cheesy. Yeah. But then if you're comparing it to now, like, well, back then when it originally came out, like in 85 or, or, or even yeah. earlier than that, yeah, I, was, I remember watching that movie as a kid and being tripped out. Yeah. Like, what the hell? What am I watching? <laughs> And just being kind of like weirdly mesmerized, yeah. so I was like, "What is this?" And they freaking de-resing each other. Yeah, de-resing. And that was a cool thing about Tron Legacy too, because it was a sequel to that movie. But you really didn't need to know too much about the original one. Yeah, there, 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 there wasn't a lot of required knowledge other than yeah. you know that you know Flynn found the grid. Yeah, <laughs> and he's kind of. They kind of give you a lot of the primers in the beginning. Yeah, they, they go, "Oh, Tron, here's Clue." Yeah, <laughs> here's all the other things. Oh, it's funny. There was a clue in the original movie, but he was kind of dumb. No. Oh. <laughs> the, the clue was the, the, the yeah. avatar of Jeff Bridges' character running in, in there, but this time, the clue. Uh, get from 1982, the year I was born. 82. There you go. That makes a lot of sense because I think uh, that movie came out like early 2012, I think. Mm-hmm. So I think it was uh, like exactly 30 years later. Yeah. And man, it was like just rewatching Tron Legacy today, I was like, saying, man, this was really good. Yeah. Or at least. I really liked it. Yeah, it was. It was watching it on my team, it was great because like, it even warned you in the beginning. It was like, oh, the, the aspect ratio was going to change because they kept all the IMAX scenes in there. So like, there's going to be black bars, like the traditional widescreen, and, and they would pop up. Yeah. It's like, and I remember when the first time I rewatched it, I was like, oh man, I was catching all the freaking like, oh, because it always came with a nice big audio cue. Because yeah. all of a sudden like, bum, bum, yeah. it would pop up like, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the first time he freaking gets caught by a recognizer, it's like, oh fuck, everything is like the, the yeah. literally the, the angle sw- the, the, they switch the angle from him to the recognizer, it's like boom, they kind of flip it, and all of a sudden, it gets freaking crazy and like intense, it's like oh shit, it's like oh, it's getting real. Yeah. So it just, I I, I was so sad, and then because uh, something else that coincided to happen with that was uh, at, at, at Disney's California Adventures, the Electronica, where oh, yeah. this whole thing where like they turned a section of of, of, of California Adventure. Into the kind of the world of Tron, yeah. they did all kinds of cool like, weird things. They had a DJ, they had an end of the line club, they had a Flynn's arcade, yeah. and all that stuff. But something that always bothered me like they're, they're, they they clearly set up the end of the movie yeah, for right. a sequel. Sequel, yeah. Like uh, Sam leaves the grid, takes Cora with him, yeah. and uh, oh, she's an ISO. She's a program that left the computer and 
all of a sudden she now exists in our real world. Yeah. And oh, then that's supposed to be a takeoff into like take us into this whole crazy sequel, which never happened. Has not materialized. Yeah. <laughs> and I sat there and I was researching that this morning. And I found out that, I guess, there was a screening of Tron Legacy recently, uh, I think it was like July 1st, Mm. and they had the director, Joseph Kaczynski, and he talked about how uh, one of the reasons why there hasn't been a Tron 3, like even though they clearly set it up for a third movie, you would think, and there was always talk, oh yeah, it's in production, and then oh, it's in pre-production, they're getting everything together, the the actors, you know, Garrett Hedlund, Olivia Wilde, it's, oh, we're signed on for a third movie, but it's kind of been in limbo. Yeah. And then the director talked about that. He did a Q&A after the recent screening of the movie. And he talked about how, like, oh, yeah, well, the movie's not dead, but it's also not alive. It's, it's cryogenically frozen. Kind of. that, that, that is the phrase that yeah. he said. Because at that point, when Tron was made, or when Tron Legacy was being made and they were setting up, that was before um, Mar- uh, Disney had bought Marvel yeah. and Disney had bought Lucasfilms. Yeah. Now, no they, 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 they have a wealth of, yeah. of, of IPs. They have all these yeah. successful movies. So even though Tron Legacy made four hundred million dollars on the hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy dollar million dollar budget, yeah. it, it clearly it made its money back, so to speak. Marketing, it sold some products. They had a very successful run of that electronic. I mean, that was only supposed to be for six months. They did it for a year and a half at, yeah. at, at the Disney's California Adventure. It was it was very successful. We're talking to some of the employees. They're like, oh yeah, it's one of the most successful promotions they've done there at the yeah. park. It got all sorts of it before they start before they turned Disney California Adventure into a Pixar park. <laughs> That was actually driving people into the park. Mm-hmm. I, I have, I have, I still have the coin. I, I go to the, the, the Flynn's Arcade. I, I, I have some of the coins left over. I kept on one side, say Electronica, on the other side, say Flynn's Arcade. I kept some of those because I'm a Tron nerd. Well, yeah, you're right. It was right when they approached Marvel because Marvel, remember they did those variant covers. Mm-hmm. And it was like Iron Man and Tron. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember the Iron Man Tron variant because it was right around that time. Like yeah. when, when the movie was being made. In 2010, 2011, leading up to the release, yeah. they didn't own Marvel yet. But after the, in that time, now they own Marvel, so yeah. now they have all these IP. And then, so that's what Joe's saying. They have a wealth of movies. They don't need this movie right yeah. now, so they're doing all those. And now they're they're rebooting all their old movies into live action. So yeah. Marvel has just a sl- I mean, Disney itself has just a slate of movies. Yeah, and again, that's something we were discussing. In, a, in the pre-show meeting, that they're that now they're considering probably doing a reboot yeah. instead of can, can which is kind of dumb. I mean, like really, because why would you mess that up? I mean, I, granted, I'm pretty sure Jeff Bridges is not going to come out in part three. No, because they because essentially at the end of uh, Tron Legacy, his character is dead. Yeah, but I mean, why get rid of it that way? You think Tron? You think Jeff Bridges? Yeah, like, Jeff Bridges is. You know, <laughs> hey, he, that, that, that's, he, he is Flynn. Yeah. Bruce Boxliner is Tron. He's, Tron he's, yeah. he's the voice of Tron. They did that awesome animated series. Yeah. Oh, I, like, they never put that shit on Blu ray or DVD or Blu ray. It drives me mad <laughs> that they, they never did anything. Like, I, 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 remember, I remember watching it on Disney XD and it was such a good show. Yeah. And they, they actually they pony up for some voice yeah, actors. Elijah Wood, right? It's Elijah Wood, you have Bruce Boxliner yeah. reprising as Tron. Um, yeah, I think it was Mandy Moore. You have freaking Paul Rubens. Yeah. You had freaking um, what's his face, the Millennium guy, freaking um, oh Lance Hendrickson. Lance Hendrickson was a, was a ba- oh dude, he was a great bad guy. And he even Olivia Wilde came out a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, and that Cora did show up, and it was Olivia Wilde yeah. doing the voice. So clearly, Disney knows that this is a property that does yeah. generate revenue. It's just right now, it's you know, kind yeah. of on the back burner. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, it's just like uh, a reboot with Jared Leto. Oh man, like uh, Jared Leto already ruined Joker. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. thank you and no thank you. <laughs> I. I feel like if they w- were re- they reboot it, it's gonna be the Matrix and shit. Like it's just gonna be, you know, <sighs> it's gonna be too modern. It's too. See, it's like, see they they, they, w- they waited thirty years to make a sequel. And they didn't reboot it then. Yeah, why? So yeah. Well, there there should be no reason. Uh, and in my opinion, as a Tron fan, yeah. I'm biased. Yes, <laughs> there there's no if you wait ten years to make another one. There's no reason to yeah, reboot it because it. it's already been like five years since the last one. I imagine somewhere. Probably it'll, it'll probably be about like five ten years from now where they may revisit it. I'm like oh okay, enough nostalgia has has passed to where oh people were like this Tron thing. Let's try it one more time. Yeah. We have a gap in the schedule here. That that third Wreck-It Ralph movie didn't get made. <laughs> the, 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 the we don't feel like making a Star Wars movie this year. Let's do a Tron movie. Yeah. <laughs> when, 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 when the Star Wars train runs out of gas in yeah. like twenty thirty. Then we will get some Tron. Then we'll finally get Tron back. Did, did, was it the uh, the technology? Created to make uh, Jeff Bridges look younger. Isn't that what started that? 
Yeah, that, that's one of the first times where we saw that kind of like that younger stuff, but that, that's been used extensively yeah, now. Marvel movies. Marvel movies, yeah. where we turned uh, uh, Michael Douglas into young yeah. uh, Hank Pym and made young freaking uh, R- RDJ in yeah. Civil War. So, we did. it's obviously the technology's gotten a lot better because, oh man, that was literally the only thing that bothered me about Tron Legacy is like, you know, like Clue and, you know, young Jeff Bridges in the beginning. It was creepy looking. <laughs> It was kind of like a too, yeah. too perfect face. I think that that was the, the cool part of it because it was like, especially Clue, like it was kind of glitchy and you're just kind of like, oh, he's a program. So, you know, so kinda, like, in that respect, yes, yeah. and it, that made yeah. sense. You kind of like, like, when in the beginning when they showed freaking like young Jeffrey, just like, hey, <laughs> we'll always be a team. <laughs> like, ah! But beyond, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, it does make sense for, for the computer programmer. But yeah, it's, it's just, it, it, it makes me, it makes me a little sad that Charlie, yeah. you know, this is a good Disney property. This is like, yeah. Technically, it's a classic Disney oh, property, yeah. Yeah. but because it, it won't make as much money as a Marvel yeah. or a Star Wars or even these all, all these live action reboots they've been doing. Cinderella, they did Cinderella. They, they just did Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. They've done, they've done all this, and then we have Lion King coming up. With apparently, I don't know if Beyonce is where it's supposed to be. I don't know if that was like an announcement happened over the weekend. Right? So all that stuff is kind of like already all lined up. You look at the the like at D twenty three. They showed all the movies coming out, and it's just a glut of movies, one after the other. Yeah, the Mary Poppins. Right? Yeah, yeah. You get the Mary Poppins with Emily Blunt. <laughs> so, uh, so something that's cool, like something that's you know for the uh, something else for like for the, for the old nerds like me, yeah. kind of get a uh, get left behind here. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it sucks, man. It's just too much, I guess. Uh, yeah, they, 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 have a, they have a wealth of IPs right they now. They do have a wealth of IPs. They, 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 I guess, well, I guess for them, it's a good problem now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Disney could always like you know finance a Tron show on Netflix. I mean, <laughs> like then that's what I'm talking about. But it's like they, they, like I said, they had that show and it just like yeah. disappeared. I remember when, when I was working at Disney, I remember I'd see it on the list of things coming out. I'm like, ooh, Tron freaking uh, Uprising. Yeah, uh, you know, coming out on DVD and Blu-ray. I'm like, yes, when that comes out, I'll freaking get it. And then they just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, and then disappeared. I'm like, dicks. Yeah. Like at least put that shit on Netflix so I can go back and watch yeah. it. I'm sure it's on the Disney XD app, that maybe. Maybe it's on the Disney XD app. I have to go sign up and do whatever <laughs> nonsense. And are you under eighteen? No. Why are you here? Because I want to watch Star Wars Rebels too. Are you a pervert? Are you Are you a dirty old man trying to watch children's content? No. I'm a, I'm a man child who likes shit from when I was young, and I want to see the Star Wars Rebels and the Tron Uprising. And the duck you tails. and Ducktales. Did you hear about that? I what? Mean, uh, this Saturday, I think. Is it this Saturday? They're, all this shit's happening. I can't keep up. I can't keep up with all this shit. They're gonna be. It's kind of crazy. Disney XD is gonna show it for twenty four hours straight. The pilot. same episode. I think two episodes back to back. Bum 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 bum. bum. All right, I'm out of soda. <laughs> <laughs> so for twenty four hours, they're gonna pull kind of like a, an Adult Swim yeah. thing they did with Rick and Morty. Yep. And they're just gonna show it over and over and yep. over. Huh, well, maybe they make it easier for, for, for old people like us. <laughs> we can't show up or we don't have a DVR. Yeah. <laughs> for the old people who don't have DVRs, they just tune in at whatever point in time. And just watch they, it. They have to swing by Disney XD, a channel they don't they really know exists. <laughs> what channel is that? What channel is XD? What the hell? I'm a, I, actually, I have to spelunk my direct TV and find out where Disney XD is. I, I, I gotta find that yeah. shit. I have no idea what channel Disney XD is. I'm just gonna have to search DuckTales and hope yeah. it <laughs> Hope for the best. I was gonna type in DuckTales and hope it isn't Disney's DuckTales or whatever. Uh, oh man. Uh, oh, well, well, on that note, I feel like we're gonna wrap things up. See, I'm so used to the studio where I have, I'm surrounded by clocks. 852? 852. So, as usual, remember, you can always catch us Monday nights on Facebook Live. Normally we would have been on Twitch, but we didn't do the Twitch thing because we couldn't set it up here properly. And, uh, and we, we wouldn't have this awesome camera angle that we yeah, see us at right now. <laughs> if you're watching this on Facebook Live. Uh, normally we're on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash DreGP Podcast. Uh, I'm going to try to be doing more gaming, but I have been doing lots of gaming Saturday nights. We have Dre versus Super Nintendo every Saturday night. Sometime in the evening. There is no consistent time. This past Saturday I did it actually a little bit later than I normally would do it. Normally I try to do it in the 8 o'clock hour, but I was very tired <laughs> from work. I got some food in me, and I was just like, uh, I took a nap, and I woke up at like 9.15, I'm like, oh shit, I gotta do Dre vs. Super Nintendo. <laughs> and, and, I, and I overcame the place where I was stuck, and then I got my balls kicked in by Crave, but I eventually beat him. I beat him. I beat that motherfucker. If you want to see me struggle playing Super Nintendo, come back Saturday nights. Also, 
on Wednesday nights. We're back here. We're here every Wednesday over by the mural. We do our Wednesday night show, the Multiverse Comics Show. Every Wednesday night, we talk about the brand new comics and whatever is going on in comic book news. That's Pete's show. Pete is the host of that one, and I chime in because I like to talk. Yeah. And I, am, uh, I, I play the co-host on that show. So remember, every Wednesday night, around 8 o'clock for that show. Yeah. Around 8 o'clock. <laughs> depends on what time I get here. depends on what time we kind of you know, get organized and set up everything yeah. to do that show on Wednesday nights. So, you can follow me at Dre GP Podcast. You can follow Pete at Nostalgic underscore comics. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got it right. Because I saw right there, I saw it, uh, Irv said, get that Twitter handle right. <laughs> nostalgic underscore comics to follow Pete Molini. That also works on Instagram if you want to follow him. And you can get him on Facebook, Nostalgic Books and Comics on Facebook, all which is tagged, all one word, it's tagged in this video right now if you want to follow his store on Facebook. Uh, Sam Z 570 he's not here right now, but you can follow him on Twitter too. He just puts his random musings on there. Um, that's pretty much, that's it. That's it. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll probably be back in our normal studio next week, unless Sam Zia is uh, busy, or then we might be back here in the Nostalgic Podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. Studios. <laughs> for Pete Molini, I'm Dre Cervantes. Thank you for watching, or thank you for listening, if this ever gets on iTunes, because obviously we don't have our audio equipment. We're going to have to <laughs> yank this audio from here. Throw it on to something. I, I, leave, I leave that up to Engineer Sam. That's the, some kind of magic right there. That, yeah, that's like I, I, that, that's beyond my technological know-how. I, 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 I know enough just to get this thing on Facebook. So, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. Remember, always share. Let every, let other people know how bad we show up every Monday night here. <laughs> thank you for watching. Have a good night. Good night.